Let's face it, sometimes DIYing something is not worth the time and effort. Sometimes it's even more expensive to DIY something than just go out and buy it. So I wanna keep that in mind for this video. So the other day I was on West Elm's website, kind of just looking around because that's what I like to do. And if you're not familiar with West Elm, I would say that their vibe is probably more modern, maybe even trendy to some extent. You definitely get what you pay for there and it's not so cheap but not so expensive, kind of somewhere in the middle. I really like the vibe there and that brings us to today's video where I'm gonna try to recreate some of their products maybe even just get inspired by them and see if it's actually worth DIYing or not because let's face it, sometimes DIYing something is not worth the time and effort. Sometimes it's even more expensive to DIY something than just go out and buy it. So I wanna keep that in mind for this video. If you're also, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Jorge or George, I go by either. I mean, I like to do a lot of high-end DIYs here that don't look like DIYs and if that's something you're into, of course hit that subscribe button. I also have other videos here too. Um, so let's not waste any more time and get into the video. All right, so I narrowed this down to about three or four projects. I haven't made them yet, so we'll see if they actually turn out good or not. Um, and by the way, I'm gonna link all of these down below in case you just wanna buy them and not uh, DIY, as well as the supplies that I used to make these. But for this first project, we have the brass and enamel two bases. They have three different options here. The large one is $35. Um, these are definitely very modern. The color scheme I like, but I don't know if that works for my home right now. So I'm gonna just do something a little bit different. Um, I think these could be pretty easy to do. So let's see how I make them. Okay, so for this first project, we are going to be using these two cylinder vases that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, just because, I don't know, they're super cheap and I love using them. And for the bottom part, I'm gonna be using these two sort of glass votive candle holders. Um, they're like sort of ribbed on them and I think just gluing them together, that would look pretty nice. I mean, it's that simple. One thing I do wanna mention though is that when, before I spray paint these, I'm going to just put a little bit of tape at the bottom of each um, holder here, just so that when I spray paint and glue, I'm actually adhering the glass to glass rather than just like glue to the spray paint. I hope that makes sense. Now in terms of the spray paint, I'm very excited to use these two right here. Now this is not sponsored, but these are by Rust-Oleum. I've been obsessed with this satin bronze one right here. It's just not, it's not so brassy. It kind of has like a sort of a vintage vibe to it. I'm really loving it. So I'm going to be using this. Also going to be using this dark bronze. Um, it's like part of the same collection, so I'm excited to see what that will look like. As mentioned, I taped off the bottom of the cylinder vases, which by the way, I got at Dollar Tree. I love these. I keep using these just because they're so amazing. They're cheap. These ones right here will resemble sort of the ones from West Elm. Um, so again, giving it a couple coats of the spray paint using the satin bronze as well as the other bronze. Um, and the reason I love these is because they don't really feel so shiny. They kind of have more, I don't know, kind of more of like a vintage quality to them, uh, which is something I'm gonna keep playing on a little bit later as you will see. But for now, again, giving it a couple coats of the spray paint just to make it nice and metallic. I ended up making a third vase and my plan for this one is to sort of tape off that gold detail at the bottom just because I want to keep it so I spray painted the rest that bronze color and by the way I will mention that you can totally spray paint this or paint these whatever color you'd like um, I just I'm really in a bronze mood right now So now it is time to put them together, but one thing I want to do is, especially with the satin bronze, the golder uh, color, I want to sort of play up the vintage feel of these. Even though these are really modern, I kind of like sort of that play between vintage and modern. So I'm going to do sort of a brushed effect to them. Here I'm just taking some water and some paint, mixing it together, um, and I'm going to basically just brush it onto the brass going in one direction just to really make it look like it's uh, brushed bronze. Uh, and then once that kind of dries, I'm just taking a napkin, kind of just rubbing some of it off. But as you can see in the little crevices, there's still some of that paint that really kind of gives it a little bit more depth, I would say. And then for the actual cylinder part, I'm kind of just brushing it in again in one direction, kind of just around the vase. And honestly, I feel like this will give it a little more character, perhaps even more depth, and not look so spray painted-y, if that makes sense. 
I'm peeling back that tape and I'm going to glue these two together using some E6000 to create a really strong bond. Hopefully this will never break apart, but I think it's going to be okay. Now I want to keep it real with you and tell you that this DIY project is not my favorite DIY because it just feels DIY-ish. It doesn't look like the quality that I would want. Um, but nonetheless, I had fun making this and I'm having fun sharing with you. So let's just take a look at the final look. Okay, so for this project, I have the exposed wood barrel handle tray. Now this tray is very simple. I really like it because with trays, especially since I'm gonna be probably using them for decor and like, you know, maybe adding books or all that, I like to just keep things very simple. And this one is simple and I like it. And it comes in two different colors. You can just get like the natural wood tone or you can get sort of this like green color. I really like both and obviously we can paint or stain these whatever color we like. So let's see if we can make this for less than $44. So I headed to my local Lowe's to pick up the materials and I found this one foot by three foot project panel as well as these three small boards that are cut to two feet each. Um, and basically these will serve as the perimeter of our tray here. So two of them will serve for the long side and one of them will be cut in half and used for the ends. I also picked up a piece of molding that will serve as sort of the handles for the tray, which you will see a little bit later on here. First thing I'm gonna do is measure out the project panel and cut it to the right size here. So we want it to be just under two feet because we want to take into account the thickness of the little boards here um, as you can see I, I don't know i feel like i'm making this way too complicated but basically i'm making a simple frame for this board that is going to be the bottom of our tray now i do need to cut it so i'm going to clamp it down to the picnic table because why not uh, and i'm just going to use my little hand saw right here now if you've never used one before do not be intimidated it's very simple Honestly, if I had a table saw, I would totally use that instead, but I don't have one. I do want one though, but for now, I'm just going to use what I have. Speaking of cutting, I'm going to take one of the two foot boards here. I'm going to measure and cut right in half. Again, this will serve as the ends of the tray. And at this point, I'm ready to glue, but me being a perfectionist, maybe even annoying, I'm going to sand this using some 320 grit sandpaper just to get it really smooth, to get a nice quality finish, very professional. Um, but once that is complete, it is ready to glue. So I'm using some Elmer's glue, not the school glue, but the glue all version, just because I've had a lot of success with it. In fact, I've made some furniture, including a credenza that's held up really nicely. So I'm gonna glue on my board here. I'm also using a brad nailer um, just to nail in and sort of clamp this together as the glue cures, which is a couple of hours, by the way. I do plan on staining this, so I'm gonna use the stainable wood filler, my bin wax to cover up the holes and gaps. No, this is not sponsored, but by the way, there was a clearance on a whole bunch of bin wax things at Fred Meyer a couple of weeks ago, actually months ago, so you know I stocked up. That is why I keep using them. For the tray handles, I could have used a dowel and resembled the West Elm a little bit better, but I found this piece of molding on clearance for two or three dollars at Lowe's, so I grabbed it, cut two eight inch pieces. We're gonna worry about this a little bit later and just let the glue and the wood filler dry. The following day, I sanded some of the excess wood filler. Now I am ready to stain, but before that, I always like to use pre-stain or wood conditioner. This really makes sure that there's no splotchiness in the stain process. It looks a little bit more professional. I'm not gonna get too repetitive because I've done this a lot in my videos, but I mixed up my own stain using Simply White, using some ebony and using some dark walnut, about equal parts, mixing that all together in one cup. And now I'm just gonna apply it onto my board or I guess tray now. I feel like it's looking a little bit purpley on camera but trust me it is not. After a few hours that fully dried now it is time to put on the 
handles. So I'm just gonna take my ruler here, locate the center of the handles as well as that edge side using some Elmer's glue. And then I'm just gonna glue it on there using my clamps, letting that fully dry maybe like two hours before I move on to put the final finish. In this case, I was kind of in a hurry and I just used some polyacrylic because it dries fast. Also, this one is in the matte finish which I really, really like, but that'll do it for this project. So let's take a look at the final result. Like many of you, I like wall art, especially wall art that has some nice texture to it. And with my art, I like to just keep things simple sometimes. Um, I mean, this one is definitely a nice painting right here that I recently thrifted. Um, I sometimes like nice newer, like abstract pieces. And this one right here is a simply framed oversized gallery frame. That's the name of it. Very original. Um, but I think it's nice. It comes in different sizes and the price ranges between $150 and $250. Um, so I think we can totally make this for less, so let's actually see if we can. As it turns out, the item that I just mentioned, I think it's actually just a large frame. I don't know if it comes with the artwork or not, but let's assume it does and just roll with it. I picked up this small frame from Walmart, very inexpensively, and it comes with a glass front. They have different sizes, by the way, um, but I'm going to work a little bit small scale here. Um, but just know that I have a large scale wall art video in case you want to check that out and find inexpensive ways to make some large wall art. But here, taking some printer paper and I'm going to paint on this like white color that I made, basically just some white with some light brown and then just again painting it on there using a little bit of the light gray color here. I think it has sort of this like blue undertone to it, kind of just mimicking the one from West Elm, kind of just like dabbing it all over the place randomly. Again, this is wall art. This is abstract. It shouldn't be perfect or maybe it should. It, there is no wrong way to do this basically. So just have fun. I can't say this enough. And then another piece of paper, printer paper, and then just painting it sort of white. Um, no added color and this is gonna serve as sort of like the clouds because to me I kind of see this piece as being an abstract version of the sky but I mean it could be whatever you want so once that was fully dry I'm gonna take the textured or the one that has the blue paint and kind of just crumbling it up to get sort of that crinkly effect to it be careful not to rip it and then for the other one the solid white one I'm going to just basically cut out two sort of abstract version of clouds here um, kind of just using my hands here again no wrong or right way to do this just have fun and then like honestly I'm totally BSing this project um, but in the end I think it works and then I'm just gonna mount it back onto the frame um, that's pretty much it for this project. I'm going to use a little bit of tape just so that it doesn't move around. Same thing for the back of the clouds. So I mounted it back onto the frame, which comes with a pre-cut mat board, by the way. But I highly recommend this project. I feel like it's totally doable. Now keep in mind, this is a small version of it. But let me show you how I style this. And for our final DIY, let's make some ceramic vases. Now these right here are called uh, pure ceramic clay vases. Very original, of course, name. Um, but these come in a couple of different sizes and shapes. Now I'm particularly interested in the one that kind of looks like a carafe, carafe, carafe? 
Carafe. Okay, carafe. This one, we can probably do this with our eyes closed, so it's going to be super short and sweet. Sometimes simplicity is key, and in this case, it is because you're just taking this carafe or vase. I got this one from Dollar Tree. Yes, Dollar Tree of all places. One of the new items, definitely stock up on this. And just spray painting it flat black, very simple. And honestly, it compares, it's the same size basically as the West Elm. I could have stopped there, but I wanted to take this even further and do another one. And I feel like I'm the last person on this planet who has not done the baking soda technique. Actually, I think I did it once. I don't really remember though. But if you have not heard of it, you take some baking soda and you add it to your paint. It kind of thickens it up so that when you paint it onto glass or ceramic, it makes it feel like actual ceramic. And that is what I did here using sort of this like light beigey color, um, just brushing it on there. And you'd be amazed at how this transforms. Very simple. Um, so here I am. I'm doing it. I'm, am I trendy now? I don't know. <laughs> but. I really like the look of this. Um, let me know if you like the look of this one better or the black one better. But that does it for this project. So let's just sort of take a look at the final result and just sort of see how I style it, create a little, little vignette. But that'll do it for this project. Now those were today's projects. I really had fun making these, or at least I think I did. I'm recording this beforehand. I assume I did. Um, but I would love to know if you have a favorite project. Definitely let me know in the comments below, as well as what store I should do next. Now of course, hit that like button. It really helps us out. Subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Also, I'm gonna put a playlist of other high-end DIYs that I think you might enjoy, maybe even binge-worthy. Um, but I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.